PRINCE2 is firmly established as the world's most practiced method for project management with over 1 million certified professionals based in over 150 countries worldwide. It's practical, flexible and scalable and can help you to manage any project regardless of whether it's building a new skyscraper, delivering a digital transformation project or executing a marketing campaign. PRINCE2 is based on decades of experience from thousands of project management professionals working across a wide range of industries and geographies. So, how does it work? PRINCE2 is made up of seven themes, principles and processes. The processes are the how and the themes and principles make up the what and why. Combined, these serve to create a flexible, easily repeatable guide to delivering successful projects. The method is supported by three main elements. A PRINCE2 book, managing successful projects with PRINCE2, certifications to foundation, practitioner and agile practitioner levels, and an online membership service to help you excel in your role. Why should you be interested in PRINCE2? 85% of practitioners stated that PRINCE2 has been helpful in their day-to-day -day role. 88% of PRINCE2 certificate holders said the certification has helped them in their career. In today's world, project management is becoming a business-wide skill. No matter what your usual role or expertise is, at some point in your career, you will need to think and act like a project manager. Stand out from the crowd and deliver successful projects with PRINCE2. Welcome to the uh, PRINCE2 Practitioner exam preparation session. If you're looking to uh, complete your practitioner exam in the near future, this is the best place for you to be. And we look forward to completing quite a lot of questions. So uh, this is the agenda for today. Uh, we're gonna do a little icebreaker. I'm gonna basically ask you to introduce yourself. I'm gonna pick on a few of you and uh, you're gonna get to know me. I'm your expert facilitator. Uh, we're gonna talk about some exam tips for your exam. We're going to do some practice session uh, in terms of practice session one, practice session two. Basically, we're going to look at what your practitioner paper is going to look like when you're sitting it. And we're going to try and cover all of the areas from principles to themes to processes all the way through. So let's get to know you. Uh, basically, I'm just going to ask. Oh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to ask uh, a few of you if you want to introduce yourself, uh, just a few things. Uh, let me see, what do I want to know from you uh, to get this session rolling? Ha <laughs> ha, I got my fancy pen wrong way around. So, yeah, uh, just if uh, you like to pop up, oh, wrong color, let's go with red. Uh, so just uh, tell us your name, uh your project management experience that's always fun and uh if you could just add uh, a fun holiday destination that's always good so who would be brave enough to come up and tell us those three things? Uh, your name, your project management experience, and your next holiday destination, or where you would like to go to your dream holiday. All right, Desreen, go for it. Speak. Hiya, I'm Desreen Wickington. I've been doing a project with YMCA Fit for the past year, so getting a bit of experience. Um. It's it's quite different to what we're learning, I think. Obviously, they're not using the full Prince 2 method, so it's good to learn it so that future projects can be a bit better. My best holiday destination is the Maldives. Oof, that sounds so refreshing. And welcome on board, Destry. It's a pleasure Thank to you. have you. Ah, who else would like to go before we crack on? German. This one is up on the floor. Who would like to follow? Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to pick on you. Ooh. All right. So 
if you're not going to follow, let me continue. Welcome on board, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have all of you here, and I look forward to working with you throughout. So, uh, yay, this is my lovely face, as you can see. So my name is Franklin Follahan. I'm a Prince Drew trainer with several years of project management experience. Um, I engage in training people, uh, both in terms of Prince2, Agile, Scrum, uh, Lean Six Sigma, and I look forward to uh, going through this webinar with you in terms of what to expect from your Prince2 practitioner exam when you do do it. Uh, as always, feel free to ask questions as we go along. So let's begin. In terms of the content, when you are doing your exam, your exam will be te tested across three main areas. You'll be tested in terms of principles, you'll be tested in terms of themes, and you'll be tested in terms of processes. So all your seven principles, all your seven themes, all your seven processes. processes. So essentially there is nowhere to hide when it comes to this exam, but there's no reason to hide because you will be able to face it confidently because you know what to expect. For those of you who are thinking about doing your Prince2 practitioner, these are the prerequisites for it. So uh, you might be aware that we are going to Prince2 7th edition. So if you had a Prince2 Foundation 5th edition, you can use it to do your practitioner. If you had a Prince2 6th edition, which is the current Prince2, you can use it to do your practitioner. Also, if you have other waterfall methodologies, such as uh, uh, Certified Project Management Association Level D, you can still use it to do your Prince2. So they do recognize all the waterfall certification as a prerequisite to doing your practitioner for this course. So as I'm sure you already know, but let me also break it down again for you. When you do your exam, it is going to consist of 68 multiple choice questions. So 68 questions, they're all multiple choice, which means that there is no writing. It all boils down to choosing A, B, C, D, or E. All must be answered. So leave nothing out. There are two main style of question, which we will see as we go along, is your traditional uh, who wants to be a millionaire style question, which is like question one, da -da 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 -da, and you have a, B, C, or D. You only need to pick one answer. You also have another style of question whereby you have, let's say column one, you have your questions here, and you have several different answers on this side. And you have to pick the appropriate answer for those as well. We will get to look at how that works as we go along through this course. The key set here is your pass mark. To pass this practitioner, you need to get 38 out of 68, which is just 55%. So I'm almost tempted to say that mini, 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 mo will do it for you, but you need to know the content. As I already said before, it will cover all the three main areas of Prince2, which is your principle, your theme, your processes. And along the way, do expect to see to use some of your understanding on tailoring as we go along. But all those three main areas we covered. The key difference between your foundation, which some of you may have done, and the practitioner is as follows. Foundation is just testing your basic understanding of Prince 2. I give you a question. And there are four possible answers, and you need to tell me which is the right answer. Practitioner is slightly different because I first give you a scenario. And in order to answer the question that I give you, so question one, A, B, C, or D, you still need to have um, another eye looking at the scenario itself. It's about the application of your knowledge to the given scenario and using that understanding to then answer the question. If you answer the question without considering the scenario at all, you may still get it wrong. 
because some of the question may be right in themselves, but they have nothing to do with the question or the scenario. So that's the main thing we're gonna be having a look at today as well. As I already mentioned a little bit earlier that there are two style of question. You have your uh, standard multiple choice question, four options, choose the correct one. Uh, in that as well, there is, and as we'll have a look, some of the questions are yes or no. So there will be two yeses and there will be two no's. When you're dealing with this type of question, the first thing you, you need to approach it in two ways. The first way is to determine whether the answer is a yes or whether it's a no. If the answer is a yes, you can basically ignore the two no's and focus on which yes is it. And vice versa, if the answer was no, ignore the yeses. So that's the way you will need to approach this. Some answer may be correct in Prince 2, but don't address the scenario. And this is where the tricks comes in. So you may read, let's say, for example, the answer question one, da, 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 A, B. You may look at question the A and say, yes, that is correct. And you may look at question B and still say, yes, that is also correct. But as you know, there can, only, there can only be one right answer. So the trick to this is to then determine between A and B, which one is answering the question. Because it's not just about foundation, it's not just about what is correct, it's about what is correct relative to the question and the scenario. And that's something you need to be very mindful of, especially when you're answering the question. You may see a question be like, yes, that's true, yeah. But if it's not answering the question itself, it will still be wrong for that question. So bear that in mind. So uh, matching questions, of course, you have two columns, as I said earlier on, and you have to match against each other. We will see those as we proceed through the uh, course itself. Your scenario. <clears throat> so your scenario is information uh, on the project that a question will be based around. You will also have some additional information that you need to refer to uh, as you continue to answer the question. Uh, this refers to people on the project, which we'll have a look at. The key thing is you need to read this scenario and understand it as you, before you begin the question. Usually, uh, the key is to kind of give yourself around 10 minutes to when you're doing your PRIS2 exam, Give yourself 10 minutes. To basically read the scenario. Read, understand, annotate. In terms of additional information, you can come back to that later on uh, because you don't really need it at the same time. But kind of bag in for yourself around two minutes per questions as you go along. Keep an eye on the time. Time will go fast. Before you know it, uh, the time has already flown. Yes, uh, one of the things I also need to mention is, uh, and I will get there, I believe, in the next slide. Uh, we'll answer that in the next slide. So, the one of the other difference between Prince 2, Foundation, and Practitioner, as you may be aware, is Foundation is a closed book. which means you only rely on your mind. Your mind is all you've got. For the practitioner, however, it's an open book exam, which means that you can have a hard copy or an ebook. If you have an hard copy book, it does have its own benefit because you can annotate in it. So you can write, you can highlight, you can annotate but you are not allowed to write all your little writing on a piece of paper and then stick it in. No sticking, so that's not allowed. However, within the manual itself, you do have some lovely, well-positioned white spaces where you can do a lot of writing 
an annotation that you can kind of refer to. Uh, if you're using ad copy, you can make notes, highlights, and stuff. If you're using ebook, you can flip through things, search stuff, but you can't technically annotate. So that's the main thing. It is an open book exam. Bear that in mind. You get to take your exam book in with you. Keep points for revision when you're revising. Uh, schedule revision in with learning. So make sure you actually put some time aside where you can be alone to revise, to test yourself. Uh, my advice to uh, my delegators often this, if you were to do the mock exam, and you get some right and you don't get some right, focus again, you know, don't worry that you've already done the exam before, try and look back at the exam and redo it again. Focus on the tricky areas that you don't quite understand, the processes that is still a bit tricky for you, kick pop with, with the revision, be systematic about it. Uh, you know, practice with exam questions, very good. I believe there are two sets of exam questions you could probably use, but yeah, if you're getting, 40s, 45 in those exam questions, you're ready to go. No how it all fits. This is basically when you hear a questions in particular, and they're talking about something, it, I often advise that at the back of your textbook or somewhere, you should have a kind of an image of the PRINCE2 processes and all the inputs that goes into each of those processes. So you know how it fits together. So if they're talking about certain things happening, for example, if they say something is happening in starting up a project process, you sort of can eliminate all the other things that happens in IP and CS and CP and know that this is the only place you're focusing on. Know where things are in your manual. I always say that kind of familiarize yourself with the key pages Especially, let's say, for example, you want to know the product-based planning technique in PRINCE2, know what page that is. If you want to know where the risk responses are in PRINCE2, know what page that is so that if there's a question around it, you can easily just go in there. Know where the appendixes are, the project management teams are. So those key pages kind of familiarize yourself with them so that if you need to look at it, you sort of know where to go. Before the exam, you can't uh, go without it. Be confident, you know, and remember to actually read the question and answer the question. One of the things that I find from years of uh, training delegators, some they know the answer, but they're very keen to talk themselves out of the answer. Read the question. Remember, they're not trying to trick you. So stop adding scenarios to it. Stop doing the game of what if. Stop creating some mini things that don't exist in there. Oh, but what if it were like this? Or maybe in these circumstances, just answer the basic question. Read the question and answer it. That's the best thing you can do. The minute you start to interpret and add your own little mix into it, that's the moment you already got the question wrong. They are not trying to trick you. They just want to test your understanding of Prince 2. Nothing more. So, quite to be clear in terms of product. In terms of, uh, in Prince 2, we use the term product quite a lot. And you can sort of break down your product into two main types. We have what we call your specialist product. And we have your management products. When we talk about specialist products, we're mainly talking about outputs. So these are the things that you're creating within the project. And when we talk about specialist products, we're talking about things like reports, uh, records, documentations, and all those stuff. So those are the things that you're using to manage the creation of your specialist products. So 
be familiar with that, but we use the word product quite a lot. This is your project scenario. Your project scenario will come with something like this. This is basically to kind of showcase to you the project timeline. So you can see, here's your start. And here's your finish. You can also see that they've broken it down into stages for you. You've got your stage one, your IP, your stage two, your stage three, your stage four, and sort of gives you an idea of what is happening in this. This is to make sure you can sort of follow through with the project. So if they ask some question regarding it, you can always come to this process map sort of things and just have a look at what's going on in there. So ladies and gentlemen, the question we're gonna be answering today is gonna to be based around this project scenario. So we're gonna sort of go through it. It's the music album project. The key things are, so a small independent record company is working with a new singer with the objective of releasing their first album. The record company will undertake a project to produce the album ready for launch. The singer has already written the songs. Contractual negotiation between the singer and the record company will be outsourced to a legal firm. The record company has booked studio time with an external producer and has hired a graphics design company to produce the artwork. The album will be released through established delivery channels. For example, it will be available to download or buy on CD. They have decided that the promotional video and launch event are outside the scope of the project. However, the plan for the launch will be produced by an external event company as part of this project. Initially, some sample songs will be produced to allow the internal marketing manager to check with the focus groups that the music has a market because the music industry is a highly competitive business. The duration for this project is 10 months and the budget is 100,000. So those are the key information you've been given so far. At least we know it's 10 months, we know it's under a thousand, we know this is their first album release. Like I said, looking at the uh, the process timeline that we looked, we saw earlier, let me just quickly go back into it, something like this. They've broken down this project down for you. So you can see that we have four stages. We have the initiation stage. In stage two, we have the key major products. So we have the key major products, such as signed contract, Record a sample songs, focus group reports. Those are the main thing we expect to produce out of stage two. In stage three, we have recorded album and artwork. And in stage four, we have registered artwork, signed contract for delivery channel, launch event plan, project product, album ready for launch. So. Essentially, the key things about this particular aspect is sometimes during your exam, they may be answering, they may ask you a question about, you know, something is happening, the recorded album is now being recorded. Now, you, if you hear that, you know that they're talking about an event that is taking place in stage three. If they were to say the recorded album is being done in stage two, you know that is not correct because they've already told you that that is scheduled for stage three. So I would always advise that, you know, even throughout your exam, at the end of each hour, just go back to your project scenario, do a little scan to make sure you still understand what's going on. Now, this is the Prince 2 practitioner exam and the exam we're gonna be doing today, uh, you, if you were to scan this, and I'll leave you up there for a second, uh, 
I think it allows you to be able to download the question and to answer the question on your phone online, at least to give you, uh, if, you know, a review of what's going on. So that's what this is for. So you can take a picture of it. It says, scan me. I'd, I will advise that you scan it. Uh, you can follow uh, through the question on that. So ladies and gentlemen, this is where we get to the interactive element and please do not be shy. The way this session is gonna go from here is I will read the question. I will also read out the possible answers. I will give you guys uh, roughly a minute or so uh, to basically answer the question. Once you feel that you know what the answer is, feel free to just, you know, type it to the host panel to, the, to me, what you think your answer is. Once I feel like enough of us has got a hang of it, I will stop it and then we'll reveal the answer and then we'll determine together uh, why the answer is what the answer is. What I want you to take out of this session is don't worry if you get it wrong. The aim of this session is to make sure that you actually understand the reason why the answer is right or why you got it wrong in the first place. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let us begin. So it says, question number one, during the initiation stage, the vice president stated that attendance at lunch events held on Monday evening is low. And on previous projects, this had resulted in low album sales. As a result, the launch event for this album will be held later in the week. Here are your possible answer. A, continue business justification because there is sufficient reason to start this project. B, continue business justification because the project justification, because the project's justification should remain unchanged. C, learn from experience because project teams should learn from what occurred on similar project. D, learn from experience because the project should continue to learn from its own experiences. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you're dealing with a question like this, this is a question on principles. There are several principles. The first thing you need to determine is whether it is continue business justification or whether it is learned from experience. If you believe it is continued business justification, ignore the learn from experience. If you believe it is learned from experience, ignore the continued business justification. Then whatever you circle it down to, make sure the answer is actually answering the question itself, not just that it is correct theoretically. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you guys 60 seconds. Go for it. Once you have your answer, feel free to send it to the host panel. Let me stop my timer. Okay, well done. I see a few people have already written to me. Uh, anybody want to share their answer with the group?
I have a lot of shy project managers. Go for it, Esri. I think it is C, um, learn from experience, because he said that on previous results, it had showed that it had lowest album sales. So they've learned from a previous experience that they've got to change it. Okay, excellent. Uh, why is it not D? Um, because he said um, previous projects had resulted. So he said that it's because of what had happened in previous similar projects, not what he'd learned. Excellent. You are correct. The answer is C. Now, we know that this is, uh, as she correctly mentioned, the answer is C. Let's explore from D. It says, learn from experience because the project should continue to learn from its own experience. Yes, that is technically correct in theory, but has nothing to do with the question because the question is referring to previous project, not the current project. So C will be your right answer. Excellent. Thank you very much for that explanation. Great. C is correct. Now, question number two, ladies and gentlemen. It says, towards the end of stage two, the project manager realized that not all the recorded sample song would be completed before the end of the stage. The project manager decided to move the, re the remaining work to stage three. This enabled the project manager to report that stage two was completed within time tolerance. Is this an appropriate application of the manage by stage principle and why? I'll give you guys a minute. If you think you know the answer, hit me up as usual. Go for it. Okay, all right, let's go through it, ladies and gentlemen. There are four options that we've been given for this particular problem. It says, A says, yes, moving, uh, yes, because moving the work to stage three avoid an exception situation in stage two. B says, yes, because stage three is not the final stage, so what can be moved from uh, stage two? Uh, C says no, because the project board should assess project viability on the completion of work plan for stage two. And D says no, because the work in stage three should start while work plan for stage two is being completed. Now, let me take the opportunity to simply briefly explain the concept of manage by stages. The idea of manage by stages means that even though at the end of initiation, the board authorizes the project, which means that they authorize everything that's gonna happen from CS to CP. The managed by stages principle means that since we have, this was, let's say, stage one, stage two, 
stage three, and stage four. It means that you don't get to move from one stage to the next without the board having checked on what you've done so far. It means that they get to check the viability of what's going on. So you just deciding like, well, if I didn't finish the work, I'm just gonna move it to stage three, breaks the rule of that managed by stages. The idea is to make sure that the work plan for stage three uh, so the work plan for stage two is actually done there. And that stage two remains in tolerance. So therefore the answer for this should be no, because the project board should assess the viability of the completion of the work plan for stage two. That is to say, you're not allowed to then say, well, if I didn't finish, I'm just going to chuck it over. Now, the fourth one says no, because the work in stage three should start while the work in stage two is being completed. No, we will need to have planned. This is in the stage boundary for stage two is when we plan our next stage plan for the work that will be started in stage three. So work in stage three will only start in stage three not in stage two. So the answer is C, ladies and gentlemen. There's a technical error here, uh, which says, one sec. So there's a technical error here. Where is it? So it says B, but that's not correct. The answer is C. That's just a technical error. All right, ladies and gentlemen, question number three. It says the project is approaching the end of stage three. The project manager has invited a team manager involved in stage four to a workshop to draft the stage plan for. The project manager has asked the team manager, some of whom are external supplier, to draft the team plan before and in order to verify that the stage plan is achievable. Is this appropriate and why? So you have two options here, whether if you think is a yes, ignore the no's. If you think is a no, ignore the yes. But let's go through the possible answer. It says, A says, yes, because team plan for stage four should be approved by the project board before the stage begin. B says, yes, because team plan can be created in parallel with the project manager creating the stage plan. C says, no, because team plan should be produced as part of the managing product delivery process. And D says, no, because the team plan produced by external team manager should comply with supply standards. I'm gonna give you guys 90 seconds on this occasion. Go for it. Once you think you have an answer, hit me up.
this one seems tricky. All right. Let's rip the bandage off. All right. The answer is B, but let's explain why it is what it is. Yes, it is appropriate for the team manager who is going to be planning the next stage plan to ask for the team, uh, sorry, the project manager who's going to be writing the next stage plan to ask his team manager to draft their own team plan so that it can verify that the work that is planning for the stage plan is actually going to be suitable. A is incorrect because A says yes, because the team plan for stage four should be approved by the project board. When we look at the levels of management that we have in Prince 2, we know that the, the business or corporate stands at the top. The project board are the big guys within our project. We know that there's the project manager and then there's the team manager. The team, the team plan is shown to the project manager. It is not sent to the project board for approval. The project board will be approving the next stage plan, not the project manager. Yes, it's a, the no says no because the team plan should be produced as part of managing product delivery. Yes, the team plan is produced as part of managing product delivery, but a draft of it can be done while writing your next stage plan. That's why it is that. Question number four. During the stage, during stage three, the singer's agent informed the project manager that the singer may be invited to perform at an international festival. If there is interest from an international audience, the record company will need extra money to expand their distribution channels. The project manager has created a provisional plan to cover the activity required, should the singer be invited. From which budget should the extension of the distribution channel be funded and why? It says the change budget, a, the change budget, because this includes the provision of unknown risk. Well, that includes the provision for unknown risk. B, the change budget, because the distribution channels are being changed. C, the risk budget, because it should be used to fund planned risk tolerance. And D, the risk budget, because it should be, it should include the funds to cover contingent plan. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I shall give you 90 seconds. Go for it.
All right. The first thing to look at when thinking about this is to determine whether what we are looking at, whether the question is talking about a risk or whether the question is talking about an issue. Because issues is where change occurs. The key definition between the two is risk is uncertainty. And that means that the outcome is not sure. It may or may not happen. Issue, on the other hand, is certain. It has happened or it will happen for definite. If we believe that what they're talking about here is something that may or may not happen, then it's gonna be a risk problem. If we believe what, we're, what they're talking about here is certain, that there will be an international, she will, be in, she will definitely be invited uh, to perform, then that's a change issue. Based on that definition, what do we think it falls in what category? Is it a change or is it a risk? Ladies and gentlemen, anybody want to give me an answer? Change or risk? It is a risk because they've made it clear to us that the singer's agent said the singer may be invited to come. So that means that by that simple as uh, understanding, we can ignore A and B. But if we're thinking in terms of our risk responses, they said that. Uh, if there is an international, if there's interest from an international audience, the record company will need an extra money to expand their distribution channel. The project manager has created a provisional plan to cover the activity required should the singer be invited. What type of risk response is this? This is a fallback. This is a contingency plan. So the risk uh, the C says the risk budget because it should be used to fund planned risk tolerance. But this is a question is talking about something more specific. It's the risk budget because it should include funds to cover a contingent plan. And this is a contingent plan. So your answer is D, ladies and gentlemen. That's where you need to look at the question and the answer together. Hopefully that helps. Ladies and gentlemen, question number five. In stage two, the music lawyer is a team manager working on the draft contract for the singer. He usually sends an email to the project manager every two days summarizing the status of the work. No major progress is expected over the next week. So the project manager amends the work package to receive report over the phone. Is this appropriate and why? A says, yes, because a checkpoint report can be event driven. B says, yes, because a checkpoint report can be an oral report. C says, no, because the reporting format cannot be changed during delivery. And D says, no, because only an exception report can be an oral report. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your answer. You have 90 seconds.
Come on, people. Don't be shy. Throw in those answers. All right, so the first thing we have to determine is, is the project manager asking the team manager to produce the checkpoint report to, 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 to receive a report over the phone? Is it allowed, yes or no? The answer is yes, it is allowed. It is the essential part of our tailoring. So you can tailor and say, you know what? I'll like it over the phone. Now it says that uh, uh, the music I draft, it usually sends an email to the project every two days, summarizing the state of the thing. The fact that it sends it every two days means that this is a time-driven report. So there are two types of reports. We have time-driven. And then we have event-driven report. Time-driven report are things that are done at an agreed interval. So, for example, something you said should happen every two days, every week. That's a time-driven report. There are two types of time-driven reports in Prince 2. That's your checkpoint report and your highlight report. The rest are just end project report. Those are event-driven. So if we determine that it is a yes, so we are here, it says yes, because checkpoint reports can be event-driven. We know this is incorrect because checkpoint reports can only be a time-driven report, never the opposite. It says yes, because checkpoint reports can be oral report. Yes, that is correct. So that's our answer. It says no, because report now, we don't need that. Accession report can be an or no, we don't need that. So your answer is B. Hopefully that makes sense. Question number six. During the starting up a project process, the project manager was told that the production assistant will not be available for the first stage. The issue needs to be managed formally. Which management product should a project should be used to record this issue and why? During the starting up a project process, the project manager was told that the production assistant will not be available for the first stage. This issue needs to be managed formally. Which management product should be used to record this issue and why? A says daily log, because it should be used to formally manage issues throughout the project life cycle. B says daily log, because the issue register is not created during the starting of a project process. C says issue register, because it should be used to formally manage issues throughout the project life cycle. And D says issue register 
because it should be used by the project manager to monitor issues on a regular pro, uh, on a regular basis. I'm going to give you guys 90 seconds. Go for it. Once you have your answer, let me know. By the way, don't panic if you're not getting it within the time frame set. Remember, you will have approximately two minutes per question uh, in the real exam. All right, I will stop you guys there. When approaching this question, the key word here is during the starting up a project process. If you understand where you are in the process, which is you're in your SU, you will know that, first of all, your issue register is not created until you get an IP. So because we are here and not here, it means that we can discard anything to do with the issue register. Yes, we use the issue register to manage issue formally throughout the life cycle of the project. However, as we are still in startup, even if we need to manage a, uh, a, a issue formally, we can only use our daily log. It says, A says daily log because it should be used to formally manage issue throughout the project lifecycle. No, that is incorrect. It can be used to manage issues in startup formally, but once we get to IP, we will switch to our issue register. No longer daily log being used for that. So daily log will only be used for informal issues. But however, because issue register is not created during startup, starting up the project process. So your answer is B, well done for those of you who got it correct, well done. So answer for that is B, ladies and gentlemen. Question number seven. The project manager is preparing the project brief. A previous project had an issue with a focus group member uploading sample songs to the internet without permission. The project manager has asked the record company cybersecurity experts to draft a section for the project brief that identifies measures required to prevent this from happening again. Is this appropriate and why? A says, yes, because the project brief should record any risk during the starting up a project process. B says, yes, because the potential security issues that applies to the project should be considered when developing the project brief. C says, no, because it is sufficient to record the issue in the lessons log for the team manager of the focus group to consider. And D says, no, because it is a serious issue that should be recorded in the issue register and, formal, and managed formally. 
I will give you guys uh, 90 seconds. You may begin. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys 20 seconds more. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's break it down. We know we're talking about Project Brief. And if we're talking about Project Brief, we're in startup. The answer is, first of all, let's determine whether it's a yes or no. So the project manager is preparing the Project Brief. A previous project had an issue uh, with a focus group member uploading sample song to the internet without permission. The project manager has asked the comp record company cybersecurity expert to draft a section for the project brief to identify measures required to prevent this from happening again. Is this appropriate? Yes or no? The answer is yes, it is appropriate. If you know there's a problem, it is right for the project manager to say, look, this is a major problem. Drop something for us and I will deal with this. Now, the question is, is it A or B? A says, yes, because the project brief should record any risk identified during starting up a project process. In starting up a project process, we open two logs. Daily log, lessons log. The lessons log is where we record any previous lessons that we can find and any new lessons that we learn about. The daily log at this point in time is where we record things like issues, risks, and any requirement or anything they're telling us at this point in time. So therefore, the project brief is not where we record any identified risk during starting a project process. Majority of the risk that is identified at that point will go into your daily log. So the question is, if this is a risk, where would it go? Within your project brief itself, when you assemble your project brief, you have a few documentation management product that goes in there. You have your project management team, you have your PPD, you have your business case, you have your project approach, and so on. But the document where this will go, the potential security should as well, and what should be, will go into your business case. 
one of the added inside your business case is major risks. Any risk that could jeopardize the viability of the project is recorded into your business case for your exec to keep an eye on. So that's why it is B. Yes, because potential security issues that applies to the project should be considered when developing the project brief. And that's in, it is in the business case that you would have a look at that. So B is your correct answer. Hope that makes a little sense. Question number eight. The project is approaching the end of stage two. The project manager may need to consult the senior user and executive about planning the production of the artwork and the recorded album. As a result, the project manager has checked the availability for the follow. Uh, as a result, the project manager has checked their availability for the following week. Is this appropriate as part of give ad hoc direction activity and why? A says, yes, because the project board should give advice to the project manager when preparing exception reports. B says, yes, because the, uh, because the need for the project board to provide informal advice to the project manager increases at the end of a stage. C says, no, because the highlight report should keep the project board informed without the need for other communication. And D says, no, because applying the managed by exception principle should allow the efficient use of senior management's time. I will give you guys um, 90 seconds. Feel free to consider it. Go for it. All right. So <clears throat> when it comes to give ad hoc advice, one of the five key activities that a board will do on the project board, the uh, in direct and project process, is to give ad hoc advice, which means that the apart from the normal highlight reports and stuff, the project manager can request them to provide advice on certain issues as they come up. Is this appropriate? The answer is yes, it is appropriate. As you reach towards the end of your project, because you're gonna be doing a lot of things, such as, you know, you want to be doing your next stage plan, you're writing, you're closing your, you know, you're updating your paid with actual, you're gonna be writing your end stage report. So you might wanna have more 
understanding of their time so you can discuss things. So the answer is yes. But A says yes, because the project board should provide advice to the project manager when preparing exception reports. Now, the reality is the question has nothing to do with exception reports. So A will be incorrect. B says, yes, because the need for the project board to give informal advice to the project manager increases at the end of a stage. As you end towards your stage boundary and you start updating your PID and you start writing your end stage report and start adding your, uh, your next stage plan, you will need more of a communication with your board. The reason for this is this. Think of it as this. This is your CS and you've been doing all this work. But in your managing stage boundary, you're going to be sending key information to the board, which will allow them to decide whether or not to authorize the next stage. So that key information includes your next stage plan, your end stage report, and your updated PID. The reason why you need to talk to the board more as you reach this end is you want to make sure that before you send it off to the board, the board already has a good visualization of what's coming to them. And they already have a considerable input in what's gonna happen. So that when this information goes to the board, it's more of a perfunctory action that they've already seen or know what's in there and there will be no delay in basically authorizing your next stage. So there's nothing in here because of all those ad hoc advice that you've been telling them about, about, oh, what do you think about this product? What do you think about that? I've been discussing before means that when the board sees all this information, it's something that they're already there. So it says uh, no, uh, C says no, because ILA report should keep the project board informed without the need for other communication. Yes, we do have ILA reports, but as apart from ILA reports, we also have give ad hoc advice. And that's one of the key information that we have in there. ILA report is a time-driven report. Think of it this way. If you're only using ILA report and you say, I'm only going to talk to the board every week, what if something happens on Monday? and you don't have to deliver a highlight report until Friday. You don't have, you don't want to wait until Friday before the board knows about it. So you will use your ad hoc advice to bypass that and say, look, something happened today. I know I'm not supposed to talk to you until Friday. However, I need to tell you what's going on now. And that's where the ad hoc advice comes in. Because time-driven report is constrained by the intervals. So it's not enough. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know, depending on where, how you feel about things, I believe these sort of questions are generally easier, easier. And when you're facing them, you simply need to uh, read a question and match it with whatever you need to use here. It says, here are three actions that takes place during initiating a project process. So you're looking over here. So keep that in mind that you are in IP at the moment. It says, which theme A to F is being applied? It says, and it's important to read this, it says, choose only one theme for each action. Each theme, which are this, by the way, these are the themes, if you don't remember, can be used once more than once or not at all. What that means is each question has only one possible answer. But that answer can be used multiple times. So question nine could be A, question 10 could be A, question 11 could be B. Do you get it? So you can use the answer here as many times as you want, but you can only use the answer, one answer per question. So 
ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go through this. And I'm going to give you guys uh, a few minutes to kind of get your mind into it. So question nine says, the project manager transfers the following statements. A similar singer may be working on another album to be released at the same time. From your daily log, remember that all this information would have been your daily log and startup, to where? So a project transfer the forms, a similar singer may be working on another album from, uh, uh, fr uh, maybe working on another album to be released at the same time, from daily log to where? Question 10, the project manager documents the statement. Funding was secured from a youth development fund, which must be used to produce the initial sample recordings. The singer's agent checks the project initiation documentation to ensure the singer's needs will be met. So those three questions, I'm gonna give you guys about four minutes and I want you to answer it. Remember one question for each, uh, one answer for each question. Once you feel like you know your answer, type it up for me, I'll keep having a look at it. You guys have four minutes starting now. Read it carefully, remember, it's about understanding what theme those things will belong to. Still expecting a few more people to, to add their answers.
Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> let's enlighten ourselves. You've written all of this stuff in your daily log. It says, let's start with question number nine. It says the project manager transferred the following statement. A singer, a similar singer may be working on another album to be released at the same time. Maybe. This tells us from a daily log, this is going into our risk. So the answer is C. So nine is C. Question number 10, it says the project manager documents the statement. Funding was secured from a youth development fund, which must be used to produce the initial sample recording that you will find in your business case. So if you look at your business case and you look at things like uh, uh, options, I mean, I have to options there, but yeah, there's a place in there that this is recorded, but yes, it's your business case where you find your source of funds. So the answer would be A. And finally, it says, the singer's agent checks the project initiation document to ensure that the singer's needs will be met, fit for purpose. This is about quality, therefore the answer is F. I hope that makes slight sense. So nine is C, 10 is A, and 11 is F. So we're back to 12. It says question number 12. What should the recording studio manager do as part of accept work package activity for the recorded album? A, agree when the recorded album needs to be completed. B, report the amount spent when producing the recorded album. C, verify. The, requ the required sound quality check have been completed. And D, report progress on acceptance of the work package using a check for report. I will allow you to answer that. You have 90, 60 seconds. All right, so let's break it down. The work package is the contract that exists between the project manager and the team manager. The accept work package is basically the signing of that agreement. This is before any work is done. This is basically, this is why I want you to do, do you agree or not? If we walk through it, it says report progress on acceptance of the work package using checkpoint report. Checkpoint report only happens after the work has started. In fact, the timing of that checkpoint report will be 
in your work package itself, which if you never accepted, you wouldn't have started work. Verify that the required sound calls check has been completed. This is after the work is done. which is not something you want to do until you've at least accepted the contract. Report the amount spent when producing the recorded album. Again, it assumes that you have already accepted the work, the work package, and you've already, you know, you're doing the work. Before, as part of your accept work package, you need to agree when the recorded album needs to be completed. What's the time frame? So that's part of what you will need to agree beforehand. If you were to start a, a job with someone, you want to know, okay, what's my working hour? What's my salary? What's my that? So that's part of your accept your work package. So the answer is A. Question 14. Oh, did I skip one? I'm sorry. Sorry, seems one will skip. Sorry, the number is incorrect. Question 14. During the initiation stage, a risk was recorded that sales of the singer's album might impact sales of other albums produced by the record company. Therefore, when this risk was reviewed during the project closure, a follow on action recommendation was made for the record company's audit department to report on the impact during post project benefit review. Is this appropriate and why? A. Yes, because the project cannot be closed until the impact from the sales are measured. B. Yes, because follow on action will enable this risk to be closed in the risk register. C. No, because the follow-on action should be addressed to an individual rather than a department. D, no, because the benefit management approach should be included, should include post-project activities. I'm gonna give you guys 90 seconds, go for it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look. The idea of follow on actions, which you will have in your closing a project process, is that naturally when you get to a certain point of your project where you need to close, there might still be some outstanding issues, outstanding things. Yeah, that... <laughs> Anytime he wants to. I just 
screen like that. Mr. Lademaj, I think you're you're not on mute. So, uh, essentially, uh, there are certain things that uh, you may want to be done after the project is closed. Let's say there was one issue that was not closed already or a little risk. You cannot keep a whole project waiting just to do one thing. So follow on actions allows us to close the project by highlighting that those things still exist while being able to close the current register and be like, yep, yeah, we've dealt with it and we've passed it on to who will have a look at it. So the answer is B, yes, because follow on action will enable this risk to be closed in the risk register. So your answer is B for that. Now, here is question 15. The music album project has delivered the album ready for launch. When closing the project, the project manager considers the recording studio manager has been excellent team manager. As a result, the project manager prepares a recommendation that the recording studio manager should be contracted to record future albums. In which activity of the closing project process should this recommendation be submitted for approval? So A, prepare plan closure. B, hand over the product. C, evaluate the project. D, recommend project closure. I'm gonna give you guys 60 seconds. Go for it. Sorry, sir. Go for it. Sorry, hello, sir. Hello, I can hear you. Yeah, sorry, sir. I was gonna ask for question number 13. I think you skip it. Uh, I think it was uh, there was an omission there. It's not, it's somehow skipped. Oh, okay. It's all right. Thank you. That's okay. Hey, this one is easy enough. As you can see, what the project manager is doing here is he is evaluating the project. Uh, basically, that's where you will say what was good, what was bad, it was excellent, it was great, it should come back, we should never be given a job again in their life. So that is C. C is your correct answer. Yay, that's just me. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys, like, uh, if you have, like, I'm going to open the floor for, like, one minute or two minutes. If you have any question about what we've gone through so far and you want to throw it at me, feel free to now uh, open the floor up. Do -do, do -do, do -do, do -do, do. Okay. I see that we don't have any question yet. So let us continue. The graphics design, question 16, the graphics design contracted to create the artwork in stage three will be following an agile approach. The project manager is acting as the team manager for the work package and has produced a team plan. Why is the use of a team plan appropriate? A, because the team plan will show whether the artwork can be completed within the Agile time box. B, because the project manager should produce a team plan when they act as a team manager. C, because a team plan is required for an external work package. And D, because a team plan is required when following an Agile approach. Go for it, you have 60 seconds. Okay, getting some nice answers. All right, I'll bring a cotton down a bit. The thing about our agile time boxes are roughly between two to four weeks long. 
a stage may be longer than that. So when you have a constraint where you're operating within a time box of that kind of length, it's a good idea to see what to do your own team plan to see if all the delivery work or all the technical work could be completed within that time frame. So your answer will be A for that one. Now, we come to this lovely questions again. Here is question 17. Recording a daily log that the graphics design will be unavailable the following Friday. So what that is gonna be. Check whether the authorizing overtime has resulted in, in the sample song being recorded on time. You know where that going. And after receiving the sample song recording, execute any required benefits management action. I'm gonna give you guys three minutes for this. You may start now. Go for it. Okay, let us have a look at it. It says recording a daily log that a graphics design will be unavailable for the following Friday. Will be unavailable. This is a certainty. This is an issue. And as such, it will be dealt with as part of your change theme. So the answer will be E. Check whether authorizing over time has resulted in sample song being recorded on time. So in order for this to happen, there was an issue where the uh, the board raised an issue that it looks like we're not gonna finish on time. And this was sent to the board, they've authorized over time. So they're checking whether the issue has been resolved. So again, this is change because it's to do with issue. It says 19 says, after receive, receiving the sample song recording, execute any required benefit management action. 
when it comes to benefits, that's to do with business case. We have the business case and we have the benefit management approach. So you only have A for that. So your correct answer should be E, E, A for those. It's a little tricky. All right, question 20. I'll try and make it quick. Uh, the song I've been recorded and meets the minimum quality requirements. However, the team manager recommends that they are they are re recorded as better quality song may improve the album sales. Re recording will cause the stage to exceed its time tolerance. As a result, the project manager has raised an issue to the project board. Is this action appropriate and why? A, yes because opportunities to improve uh, business justification should be considered by the project board. B, yes, because the stage would be an exception and an exception plan will be required. C, no, because the project manager should reject the recommendation as the work package has been completed within quality tolerance. And D, no, because the project manager should uh, take corrective action to improve the quality of the recorded song. I'm going to give you guys some minutes, seconds on that one. Go for it. Let me know how you guys are doing. All right, don't feel rushed. The answer should be yes. And let me explain how this works. It is a yes because even though it has been recorded to meet the minimum quality requirements, however, you know you can do better. So this is where part of that ad hoc advice comes in. As the board are not obligated to basically take it, but you are still obligated to let them know about it. Like, I know you've told me to do this and I've done it. However, here is something I've been told you should consider whether or not you want to do it because if you do it, you could get better return. It is then up to the board to then decide what they want to do there. So it is A, Yes, because the opportunity to improve the business justification should be considered by the project board, but it's not B, yes, because the stage will be an exception and an exception plan will be required because technically the board hasn't made a decision as to whether or not they want to go that route or not. So the stage is not an exception. We're just making an ad hoc advice, basically saying, look, this is what's going on. Would you like it? If not, I continue as agreed. So the answer is A. Question 21, the singer has signed a contract with a recording company and has been asked to sing at a large international festival on a Friday night. This may increase the international sales of the album that has been produced. Even though the audience is usually bigger on a Saturday, the project manager has agreed to fund the singer's performance at the festival. Has the project manager enhanced the opportunity and why? Yes or no? Yes, because the singer now has the opportunity to appear at a festival. 
B, yes, because performing at a festival may have a positive effect on sale. C, no, because the positive effect on the sale is not guaranteed. And D, because the, because the record company should negotiate to have the singer perform on Saturday. I'll give you guys uh, 60 seconds, go for it. Think about it very carefully. Has the project manager enhanced the opportunity? That's the key. So. All right, so in terms of enhancing, you have an opportunity here. So let's have a look at it. The, uh, as has to, this, uh, to sing on a Friday night. So definitely that's an opportunity. This may increase sales of the album that has been produced, even though the audience is usually bigger on a Saturday. So if you're going to enhance this opportunity that you've been given, if you're gonna make it better, then you need to be singing on a Saturday, not a Friday. But since the project manager hasn't done anything to move out to Saturday, he's just going to let us sing on Friday. He has not enhanced the opportunity. So therefore the answer is D. No, because the record company should negotiate out the singer perform on Saturday. That's the only way to enhance the opportunity they've been given to make it better, to go from the small Friday crowd that they offer to the large Saturday crowd that they can get on a Saturday. So the answer is D for 21. During stage one, when preparing the communication management approach, the project manager included the record company's marketing manager as a stakeholder. The marketing manager will be checking the focus, checking with focus group that the music in the album has a market. Without a market, the without the market for the album, there will be no justification for the project to continue. How well does this apply to the organization theme of why? A, it applies well because the stakeholders, ex, the stakeholders external to the customer organization can exert a powerful influence on the project success. B, it applies well because the marketing manager will need to be aware of the progress information about the stage and receive report from the focus group. C, it applies poorly because stakeholders are groups or individuals will be affected by the project's outputs, such as delivery channels. And D, it applies poorly because the focus group should be included in the communication management approach as stakeholders not the marketing manager. I'm gonna give you guys 60 seconds, go for it.
Okay. The answer here should be B. It applies well because the marketing manager will need to be aware of the progress information about the stage and receive report from the focus group. We have 222, I guess, the 13 that was missing. Sorry about that. Uh, this is another 22. Uh, but just think of it as 23. Uh, during, the initiation, during the initiating a project process, the vice president VP estimate that the music album project should generate sales that exceed production costs. However, the sale estimate may be too high and therefore the record company may not make a profit. The VP will undertake business assurance and the marketing manager who is a senior user will undertake user assurance. Is this appropriate for VP to be responsible for assessing the effect of sales on the business case and why? Let me know for this, what you think. I know it's another 22, but it's yeah, technically 23, but giving you some time to have a look at it. Okay, so let me just quickly explain this. When you look at the uh, Prince 2 roles, we know that some roles may be shared and some may not be shared. The executive can be his own business assurance and the uh, senior user can be his own user assurance. So yes, Uh, so yes, because the business assurance review risk that impact on the business. So yeah. Yep, B will be correct. Excellent. Twenty-three. Oh, brother. An ultimate question. So during the initiator project process. The vice president VP estimate that the music album project should generate sales that exceeds production costs. Mm, I think we've already, oh, sorry, we've already done that. Apologies. Twenty-four. The project manager has been recruited from a large multinational record company. To reduce the time spent on the initiation stage, the project manager decides to use Sprint's two management approach from project at the previous company. Is this appropriate and why? A, yes, because the project manager is learning from experience on previous projects. Yes, because the project manager is improving because justification is improving business justification for re by reducing costs. C, no because the previous company's project management approach are unlikely to meet the needs of the project. And D, no, because the project should focus on specialist product rather than the management approaches. I'm gonna give you guys 60 seconds for this, but think tailoring for this. All right, I see some answers. And the answer would be C, think tailoring. No, because the previous company's management approach are unlikely to meet the needs of this project. You should tailor to suit your project, not just take things from the previous one and then dump it together. So that's not ideal. And last 
question. Thank you, Vaino. Thank you for sticking with me this long. It's been a pleasure. Ba -bum -ba -bum. So here we are. The music album project team has identified that another department within the company is producing a similar album at the same and or a similar album of the same type of music. As it is only a small company, it cannot resource two similar album projects. Which principle should have been applied more effectively to, to avoid this situation and why? A. Defined roles and responsibilities because cross-functional projects involve people from different departments. B, defined roles and responsibility because a project management team structure enable effective communication between team members. C, continued business justification because linking projects to organization objectives ensure benefits are aligned to strategy. And D, continued business justification because the justification for the for projects should be reviewed regularly throughout the project life cycle. You have 60 seconds. Make it count, ladies and gentlemen. This is your last question. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. Come on, be brave. One last throw of the dice. All right, let's have a look at it. It says the music album project team has identified that another department within the company is producing a similar album of the same type. This is a small company and it cannot resource two similar album projects. So which principle has been applied? This is about continued business justification. This is whether or not it remains viable, achievable or desirable. So we can discount this. Which is it? Let's start with D. It says continue business justification because the justification for project should be reviewed regularly and throughout the project life cycle. While this is true, it doesn't answer the question we have, which is that we have two possible projects that are doing the same thing. That's the real problem here. So C says continue business justification because linking the project to organization objectives ensure benefits are aligned to strategy. If we had done this, we will not have two possible projects doing the same thing. So your answer is C, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you very much for sticking around. That is the last of the 25 questions. You have been amazing uh, throughout. Let's proceed to the random phase. So I will open out, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have any questions regarding what we've gone through so far, feel free to pop up or you know send a message in the, uh, what's it called, the panelist chat, not the panelist, the Q&A, and I'll be more than happy to uh, answer them. Uh, can we get a question of the a copy of the question and answer, please? Uh, I believe that the at the beginning there was a a a thing that you could scan me, which had the questions on them. So feel free to I might go back there again 
but feel free to scan it and it should be able to give you the questions and answers, I believe. Hold on a second. Yep, this one. So I believe this is the practitioner examination question. If you scan the QR code or you take a picture of it, you should be able to get to the question. I'm gonna leave it on there for a few seconds. If you have any other questions, go for it. Hello, sir. Yeah, go for it. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Um, I was just gonna ask that. Um, is it possible for me to book uh, um a section for the foundation exam? Uh you want to do the foundation? Uh, what do you mean by a session? Yeah, I don't know. Like, just um, like I have a section with private section with you. What if uh, I... we, we do have. Uh, I think these are some of the dates that's coming up. Oh, um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, we do have on the twenty eighth of September, uh, okay. where we have introduction to uh Prince Two Foundation Practitioner Session. So where we go into the foundation aspect of it. And uh, in terms of the 5th of October, we have the uh, principles and Prince 2 themes, the foundation knowledge session. And then on the 12th of October, we're going through processes and project tailoring, which is other foundation session. So yes, we do have those coming up uh, as well, as well as we do have some uh, work on YouTube as well for the previous ones we have done. So feel free to uh, message before you go and the department will send you the link and stuff, including this one. Oh, uh, okay. All right, thank you. My pleasure. Uh, la, 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 la. Questions, ladies and gentlemen? So, uh, as I was saying, this is uh, our upcoming webinar. Feel free to take down the dates. We will be going through on the 28th, the Foundation Practitioner Introduction Session. Uh, on the 5th of, uh, 5th of October, we'll be doing the Knowledge Enhancing, as well as the 12th of, of, of October, where we'll be completing the Practitioner Session. Uh, in terms of the Foundation Exam, we will also be doing that the way we do this one as well on the 17th of October. So, uh, so uh, if you scan this, scan this uh, for upcoming webinar updates. So if you scan this, it will give you the upcoming webinar updates. So I would suggest you do. And yeah, you guys have been excellent. I believe we are uh, heading towards the end. You guys have basically survived two hours of Prince 2, which is indeed great. Uh, ah, by the way, don't forget the feedback that's been sent in the chat. Uh, please fill it in and of course you can subscribe to our uh, event bright for future uh, events which is always nice all right thank you very much it's been a pleasure and i look forward to seeing you another time peace and out okay bye